God is so good, Nani. I praise God that his temperature broke. That was my big fear. 104 on a two-year-old is dangerous, deadly. Hmm. He is now home. They just picked some mangoes. They're going to make some mango salsa this weekend. Oh, boy. And he's ready to play hockey. There we go. Praise God. <laughs> well, that's when you know they're healed, when they're ready to go back and play. Exactly. Praise God. Praise, God. Hmm. praise the Lord. I'm happy for you, Nani. Oh, thank you. We, I'm just ecstatic over that. God has been good. Now, like I said, even at work, we had that corporate visit today. And these are the big people that you never meet. You know, and I'm talking way up in the top floor of the office. Mm -hmm. They all showed up today for a annual visit, they call it. Mm -hmm. And an annual visit with them is to ask employees what can be improved, what can't be improved, and what you are doing on your property. <laughs> Or at your facility. <laughs> well, drink, drink, I'm yeah. trying, Mac. I'm drinking. This is the third bottle since I've been home. <laughs> but what happened is um, they had to do a drive through the lot. So this morning, that's why my car got filled. Uh, is so I could use my vehicle to get the garbage off of the property. Any loose trash. And Sure enough, I'm not even halfway done driving the lot, and I already know there's a big mess on the east side of our property because the mowing guys decided to, instead of moving the garbage, shred it with the lawnmower. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so I have chunks of wood, rock, garbage everywhere over there. <clears throat> and I'm thinking, now I'm really in trouble. Lazy. Lazy. <laughs> Oh, pardon the coffin, guys. I am get. I'm still overheated. Yeah, I'm being outside all day. That, uh, on, on the lawn care crew side of that, that is just pure laziness. Oh, there is no excuse for that. It's been a constant battle with this Command Seven since they took over the contract for our and, and I I speak from personal experience on that because I grew up in that place. I, I and I used to run my own landscaping business. First thing you do is pick all the garbage up. If you're not going to put it, if you're not going to put it in a can, just put it to a pile off right. the grass and mow the lawn. And right for us to do our job. Nope, they just mowed right through it, just shredded it all. Mm -hmm. So they took maybe five bags of garbage and turned it into a million pieces of garbage. <laughs> I mean, beer bottles, whiskey bottles, beer cans, you name it, all manners of garbage. Oh, uh, you got log book patience. receipts, everything just shredded to little pieces. Oh, you got the patience of Joe. So it was a mess. And, but uh, that's believe, dangerous, George. They could, <laughs> they could hurt somebody with flying debris. Oh, I know, and that's yeah. something they're going to be discussing with the um, Command 7 people. Um, because they pay them $3 million. Uh, for our site alone, it's 150000 a year for our facility alone to maintain it year-round. Wow. And they can't even weed it properly. They weren't even mowing it properly. They were skipping half the property. And it's been an argument since last year with this company. And if when they mow, they don't even mow all the property properly. Um, we couldn't get to like four or five trash cans for safety because the weeds were four foot high. And they didn't want us getting bit by snakes. So we weren't even allowed to go pick those cans. So those cans were over full sitting back there. And I finally got my weed eater fixed, my brand new weed eater that somebody broke this last couple months ago. I got the new part for it and got it put on there. And I was weed eating the other day and Scott goes, stop weed eating. I pay somebody good money for that. I said, I have to get these cans. I have to get access to these cans. They're disgusting. And so Scott started laughing. He goes, but no more weed eating, George. <laughs> but um, then they went and did that this morning. Well, I'm thinking I'm in trouble for this because it's a, just a big, horrendous mess. And it's like, it, and I'm thinking I'm going to get ripped a new one for my team not getting it cleaned up quicker. Well, I go in and the guy goes, this facility is huge. 
It's looking greater than it ever has. What can we do to improve it? I said, give me one more guy, even if it's part-time. I have three good workers. I need a fourth guy to do the odds and ends. I need that. And they go, well, we're going to be putting that in our book so we can look at it and review it. Um, but I was thinking I was getting ripped, but instead he goes, it looks great. I'm proud you guys are getting this place in shape. So to hear that from somebody that's in a high office that only sits in an office half a year to come into our facility and say, hey, keep it up and not getting dinged for something like that was the first time in a year and a half not being lectured on what we aren't doing. So hmm. that's how good God is. Yeah. So, but um, definitely, I'm just glad that Nani, you got your power back. That was a big prayer this today. Uh, oh. Lori and little Benny, it's fever breaking at two years old. Yeah. All, all it took was the prayers of Christians. Exactly. And mama's love and mama being a medical person. <laughs> but it took God guiding their steps and giving them the right medicines. So yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to God no matter what. <laughs> Ooh. But I pray everybody's had a good week. And hey, Chris, that beautiful guitar that you welcomed to your family. Did you get that today? I did. Oh, man, that's a beautiful guitar, brother. I love that orange. It was 200 bucks. Wow, that ain't bad. That looks like it was worth more than that, though. Oh, it's... I think it would compete with a $2,000 guitar. Yeah, it looks gorgeous. I was, I'm, I'm happy with it so far. Got good sound and good tone. Amazing. I thought I would have to go and gut it and put all new hardware and electronics, and it's just going to be new tuners. Wow. That ain't much. Praise God. No. Yeah. God. I so, mean, uh, bucks, I'm, brother, you got an easy $2,000 guitar. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I lucked out. <laughs> oh, you got so, blessed out. God yes. You. God bless you. <laughs> I don't that's believe what I'm thinking. I believe in God's blessings. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't a dent in the box, and I guess it came through the United States Postal Service. Oh, oh. That's a surprise. <laughs> not a dent. <laughs> it's like holy smoke, something odd happened here. Like some they got it. One actually did their job. God blessed you big time with even with the delivery. That's awesome. It is. Yeah, it is awesome. Yeah. I so like little it. things that, that matter, kind of like you were saying about, you know, the guys mowing over everything in their way. Yep. And then not getting in trouble for it because they realized what happened. So and poor Scott, Scott, Bady, uh, our district manager. What a what a God, what a blessing he is to me um, mm -hmm. today. Because when I when I went in there, I was going in there to go to the bathroom and get something to drink. I wasn't going in there to talk to corporate. As far as I knew, corporate was still out in the shop. I walk in the store and here's all these big wigs, and I'm like, oh Lord, do I turn around right now and walk back out the door? And instead, the guy grabbed me instead and said, No, I got to talk to you. And I'm thinking I'm in trouble. Well, Scott comes around the corner and he goes, quit looking at me and him at the same time, George, because of my messed up eye. <laughs> right in front of them, picking on me about my bad eye. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Lord. And they're just laughing, and I'm laughing with them. And I went, all right, Scott, you just had to pick on the disabled guy. And everybody was laughing. So that was the other part was just kind of comical. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as Scott goes goes for sensitivity training in a month. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I looked at him and I went, "Don't worry, I'll see you so, later. I'll be right there with you." Getting so that's kind of, <laughs> kind of what I do, George. Is your guys do annual visits? I have biannuals at some properties, annuals, monthlies. 
And yeah, that's kind of what I do. Yeah. So I would, like I said, as I've, it's taken me a year to get this place in order, Chris. Um, when I came into this place, I adopted a mess. When I got transferred to the Bennett facility, I got, I adopted a mess. I wasn't planning on being shift leader uh, or any kind of lead maintenance guy. I was just going to be one of the crew. I mean, I had no intention of becoming a leader again or being the one that everybody yells at. I just had no intention because I was done with that kind of management, you know, mm-hmm. and, God, and God had other plans, like Crystal said. And Scott says, nope, now that we got rid of the problems, you're the leader. You're going to lead your crew. And you're going to lead it because I'm asking you to. And so I've been stuck as shift. I've been stuck as maintenance lead. And it. Scott goes, I know you had a list of over 100 items last year. How much do you got it down to? And I said, I got it down to 60. And he goes, well, we're going to help you get it down lower. So they got me down to 30 in the last month of major things that needed to be fixed on the property. So... That's how good God is. When you serve God and you trust God, he delivers. Not because you deserve it, but because he loves you. Exactly. And a lot of people will say, I deserve Well, I can that. promise you, you're being watched like a hawk. All the time. Because, well, I'm just saying, if those guys come in annually, um, I have a pretty good clue what goes on in their mind. Yep. And the fact they're asking questions, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, so as long as you can provide solutions, I think you'll get what you need. That's what it sounds like with um, this new guy. He's been really a solid player for us, you know. It's just I said, I just I just need that one extra guy, and that'll put us over the edge so I can concentrate on the major things. And let them do the minor thing. Well, I mean, I can do the math pretty quickly and realize that I could beta test a crew such as yours. If you're looking at 150000 a year going down range for basically services kind of rendered, yep. what about the fact that if you could in-house it, you could have Disneyland facilities. Yeah. And because I would love to be able, they took it from in house and took and gave it to these private companies. And ever since they outsourced it, it's been a nightmare. So, unfortunately, you know what? Well, I mean? yeah. But um, it, the, the thing is, is that whole back area that's not even watered or maintained, it's just mowed. It's basically hay field and weed field. Every tree they planted over there has died and they can't figure out why. And I'm laughing and they go, what's funny about why, why are you laughing about our trees dying? I went, one, you never put irrigation in. Two, you've got clay and sand. Pine trees don't like clay and sand. They like rocky soil that's arable. And they go, oh, I said, that's why all three trees have died. Because it's just clay and sand. and There's nothing for the roots to actually get nourishment from. And they go, oh, and there's things like that. And then these new companies come in and they want to put these rocks. And they cheated um, the company out of six mil thick uh, landscaping fabric and only put one mil thick in. It's just a oh. place. Yikes. What a mess. Yeah, it destroyed the place. And that's what they went to. And I'm like, I would have went to small pea gravel and six mil fabric. I would have well, said if I could tell you yeah, don't don't use any plastic products. Use a like a road based fabric. That's what you use, six mil road fiber. And what we use is I uh, it's like a cloth. Yep. Um, um, it's poly. I mean, it's woven. Yeah, that's exactly but, it, Chris. You know, that that gives you a fighting chance. And weeds will still make it through that, believe it or not. So, But 
what they did is they put the large stone, which is about two inch in, two inch rock, no sand, nothing in between it. They just put this fabric down, this one mil thick fabric, never sprayed the ground to neutralize it. And then they threw this fabric over and said, oh, it'll stop the weeds. We guarantee it. It's not even a year later. And it's, <laughs> they spent right. three days pulling weeds out of the rock. Right. Well, now. there's a dust that settles in, um, dirt that flies around. I mean, yep. wind carries things, debris. Especially seeds. And weeds don't need a whole lot to take root. Kind of like sin. <laughs> it yep. doesn't take much for sin to exactly. take root. Yeah. But it's just, you know, it's just those little things. When I came there and I said, this is not good. This is not going to work the way you guys planned it. And Mark goes, what do you mean? I said, the way the hill is sloped and you're trying to use large rock, which has nothing to adhere to, the rock is going to slide off and weeds are just going to come right back. And he didn't believe me until the spring. And he's like, oh, you were right. And I went, yep. <laughs> hey, said, did, you see, did you see Mac's uh, text comment? What was that? Did you see Max text or his comment in the comment section? Yes, I did send Isaac an invite. I'll send him another one. Okay, because he said that uh, he asked if you were right. And I said, yeah. And I said, did you get an invite? And he said, no. Let me see, because I thought I did. Yeah, I just sent him one not even 20 minutes ago. Let me send it okay. again. Oh, it did send. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you, Mac. Yes, sir. And I made it back. Yay! God, I haven't started yet, Nani. We were still discussing that. Cause he he said he had stuff to do, but I told him that I had sent you a, a comment. Yep. Sorry, it somehow didn't send it. It sent you last week's link. Oh. Sorry, Isaac. Oh, I'll have it on recording that I said sorry, Isaac. <laughs> there you are, brother. I'm sorry. <clears throat> and Naughty's going to be popping in and out. She's having power surges, guys. So if you see Naughty pop in and out, that's why. But good to see you, brother Isaac. Yeah, hey. Sorry about that. I thought you forgot about me. No, it didn't send it. It sent last week's link. Oh, uh, yeah. Somehow. I don't know how it sent last week's link, but it did. And then I just resent it again and it popped in. Oh, well, you're just in time because we haven't started uh, reading the prayer list yet. We were just chit-chatting, so. <clears throat> about things with businesses and things like that and work. But I got gotcha. been good, though. Isaac, I'll tell you right now, God's been good to us. So, a lot of stress was taken off my shoulders today. So, because of blessings. Ooh. But let's continue keep praying for Texas, guys. All you folks down there in the southern side of Texas that had to deal with the hurricane barrel and the aftermath of it. And its offsprings. <clears throat> I know uh, Indy's Coffee right now has no power at all. Brandon and Carla are there in Galveston. So we're still praying for them. Um, keep uh, Little Wolf in prayer. Kayla, yeah. always keep her in prayer. We're also keep Leroy and Dutch Biker and Navarre in prayer. Keep Connie and Shyla in prayer. Definitely keep them in prayer. Uh, Vaughn and Sawyer for salvation. Even though, it, you know, the Bible says to even pray for your enemies and to forgive even those that bless and curse you and to pray for them also so we cannot forget them. Fearless Patriot Sister Maria, we're still praying for. Allison for prayer. Simone, um, who lost her dad, we're still praying for. Let me grab another bottle of water. <clears throat> Before I forget to grab it and not have another cold one. 
because I've been coughing pretty bad today from the heat. Sister Grace armed with mercy and her sister Gina health issues because of grief, which is a wicked, wicked enemy. It's grief. It makes a lot of health issues. <laughs> Little Evelyn, we're still praying for her. She's at home. Little Gus, uh, he's doing good from what I've been told as well. Poppy went home and is able to be with her brothers and sisters now. Wow. So <laughs> praise God for that. And that's the little lady, little one-year-old uh, heart baby. So we're definitely keeping her in prayer. Uh, if I pause, it's because I'm chugging water. <laughs> I'm not going to get yelled at twice by Mac. For not drinking. <laughs> Isaac will be next. <laughs> we'll hear chug, chug, chug again. Uh, by the way, Isaac, that was a great thought of the day. I love yes, it. it. <laughs> Thanks. I'm still laughing at that. That was so good. I, I almost spit coffee all over my laptop when I read it. So that was that was good. Uh, we're still praying for Nani's Grandpa Trujillo and Grandpa Leon. Uh, we're still praying for Grandpa Trujillo who's dealing with Grandma Trujillo, who's battling dementia, and he's not doing his best right now. So we want to keep him in prayer for that. Yes. Yeah, right, Nani? Yes. Okay, I didn't want to overstep there, but I know we had asked. Oh, him for that's totally. Uh, Panther, Don Kennedy, whether she wants it or not. Bill, whether he wants it or not. Mm -hmm. We're praying for them. Uh Daughter, both daughters, uh, Lindsay's, and both Lindsay's, we're still praying for him. Um, we will talk about Rory and Benny here in a minute, Nani. Thank you. I haven't forgot them two little angels. No. We're still praying for our 16-year-old Abby. That's Amy's daughter. Um, we're still praying for her. Um, every night that mom reads her devotional, she shares it with everybody. Praise God. And, it, and little Abby, when she hears the devotional, she lights up the room. That little girl, that differently abled girl, lights up and the room lights up with her, they say. So her okay. whole demeanor changes from the quiet shell that she normally is to this overjoyous shell. <clears throat> There's an intelligent mind trapped in that body. Yes. <laughs> Who loves God? We're still praying for Cece. Thank you. If we haven't forgot praying for her, the boss's mother, for prayer. Still praying for that as well. Lisa, Max's cousin, who rang the bell. She's doing better and better and honor his effort from what Max told me. <laughs> Every day. Every day. <laughs> uh, Brother Frank to continue in Christ. Uh, we're still praying for him. When he can make it, he can make it. But he is raising a daughter. And that does take a lot of time for dads with all the homework, even in summertime and yes. summer activities for children and work. It does tie up a lot of his time. We're still praying for Candace and Saya. We haven't forgot them. Bonita and her family. Alex, who's battling cancer. Max Buddy's son, uh, Noah, for cancer. Mary Beth R. Yes. Praying for. We haven't forgot praying for Mary Beth. Uh, another Terry who had a mild stroke, we're praying for. Crack his wife, Kimmy. Kimmy is in a real bad way today, and Dusty's breaking down. I'll yes. tell you that right now. I see Crack all the time online, and I prayed for him earlier today on Twitter. But he definitely needs prayer warriors to keep praying right now for his strength and comfort because. Watching a terminally, terminally, I can't even talk, terminally ill person die in front of you yep. is something you don't want to wish on anyone. But that's what he's dealing with. Uh, it's not that it's not a matter of if, it's when she's going to pass. Right. And he's raising a nine year old child mm. on top of this. They have a nine year old child. That's witnessing it too. That's got to be gotten that little child. Yes. Because he's at that age of reason where he's understanding what's going on. So we want to keep that in prayer. Especially crack of sons and daughters. 
Yes. Buck, who is battling cancer, we're praying for him. Uh, Antonio, we're still continue praying for Antonio. He's had a lot of battles with his new Christianity. <laughs> well, I apologize, guys, but it's coffee. Stand. I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm drinking water, Nani. Good, good, good. Mac, Chug I'm chugging. And Isaac, I'm chugging. <laughs> so, and like I said, Antonio, who's a young Christian, he lost his Nana. That's hard on him. So keep him in prayer. Mario for salvation still. Haven't forgot him either, Nani. Thank you so much. Uh, like I said, all of Terry's fur babies, we praying for them. <clears throat> J. Carr, her daughter-in-law, we're still praying for. Jasmine, Stephen, Nicole, Ashley, Armando, Karen, Tim's sister, we're still praying for their salvation. <clears throat> we haven't forgot to pray for them. Uh, Philip's daughter, Isabella, to get out of sophistry. JC's sister, Katie, and his mom, Mary, and him, with their battle of grief. We're still praying for them. Thank you. <laughs> what happens with heat exhaustion with me? I just start coughing. Yes. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Sorry. We gotta catch up where I was here. Ooh. Riley, who has cancer. Uh, blue collar bill. Mm -hmm. The unspoken request. We're gonna keep that in prayer. Isaac. Mm -hmm. We're gonna keep that unspoken request. God will work with you. <clears throat> I know he is. He's already working with you. Mama Bear and her battles. Mike Harris and his battles. Tam for hospital and salvation. Vincente for salvation. <clears throat> Mark, Donnie, and Lori, who are battling cancer. David, who is needing prayer. <clears throat> Terry, which I haven't got an update. I see you a family. As far as I know, they're out of the hospital, but still battling eight them. <clears throat> so we're going to keep them in prayer. Alan, who lost his life, his wife, Linda, to a terminal illness. We're still praying for him. Scott, who is battling liver failure, we're still praying for him. Max landlord, Jason. Cancer, colon cancer. <clears throat> We can't forget that one either. Peggy and Billy for colon cancer. Joe Dunn and his wife. James and Gina. We're still praying for Kimmy, who's battling blindness. That's Tabby's daughter. <clears throat> and Jacob, her brother. And all the Wynn family. Let's put it that way. Let's pray for the whole Wynn family right now. Because they're going through things that... We can't imagine. <coughs> That's the best way I can say that. Sarah, Sister Sarah, Good News Club, even though she's already done with that for the year, we're still praying for them, and we're praying for Sarah's health and all her travels that she does. Sister Sarah, we want to make sure we pray for her. <coughs> Isaac, uh, let's see here. Bill, okay, I did already mention Isaac's prayer requests. Bill Haas, Patty's ex. We're still praying for that situation. Jeremy, who lost his wife, Rebecca, we're still praying for him. We're still praying for Diego Ranch to get the land and things that they need to keep caring for veterans and differently able folk with the equine therapy. We're praying for our landlord. We're still praying for 
I'm just making sure I didn't miss anybody. Rocky Mountain Mama, his husband who's battling the decline of life. We're still praying for Ken Murphy's daughter, Riley. I did mention that. Sorry for my disorganized chaos over here, guys. Bill, Brother Tangy. I almost forgot to mention him. We're still praying for him. I'm making sure I'm not missing anyone on the main list first. Straightforward. Uh, grandmother, unspoken. Pandora, medical issues. Uh, she did have, I think, believe it was pancreatitis, or she had surgery for it. And she's healing and she's getting better each day. And she's a little firecracker. So, praise God, she is a Christian. And she's still doing it. Little Lotta Lou, we're still praying for, who lost her husband. <laughs> Eric's son, Jaden, stage four leukemia, needs a bone marrow transplant. We're still praying for him. Ethan Fusil's family, they're in uh, Polk County, Florida. They still haven't found his body, and they assume he's deceased and murdered. Uh, Weber, Max Buddy, we're still praying for him. <clears throat> I haven't forgot that one, Mac. Uh, Sister Carissa, we're still praying for. Esty, whose husband Frank committed suicide. Yes, thank you. We haven't forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second here, battle in this stupid cough. Water would just throw up, but <laughs> oh, you okay? I'll be okay. I just gotta get this cleared. <laughs> Guys, forgive me. <clears throat> what you gotta do? <laughs> <laughs> No, I went to cough and I was in the middle of a sip and choked. Mm. Uh oh. I tried to drown myself. Oh. <coughs> With water. Oh. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh. When, when the heat gets to me like this, I think from all the damage in my throat, <coughs> every time. But I, I, it's also my fault for not getting out of the sun more often, too, today. So, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. <clears throat> so, Eric's son, Jaden, we mentioned. He's in Fusil's family, we mentioned. Carissa Essie, um, whose husband, Frank, committed suicide. We're praying for that family. Mario's wife, we're praying for. Uh, Pam, who lost her husband. We haven't forgot Pam. Uh, Ryan lost his dad on fa Father's Day. Like I said, Sister Sarah for healing. Our politicians, we got to pray for our politicians. Mm -hmm. No matter what, we got to pray for the, the enemy. Uh, Sammy, let's see, we're pay praying for Sammy who passed away. Prayers for comfort for the fa Long family. That I haven't forgotten, Mac. <laughs> Nani's oh. daughter, who's a level one trauma. Center at NICU, Labor and Delivery Mom and Nurses. We haven't forgot that. Thank you. We're, like I said, we're praying for Texas with the storm there in the southern part of Texas. Uh, Rory is getting better, praise God. Yes. And little Benny's temperature broke today. When Nadi mentioned it to me, the baby's temperature was 104. Now it's 99, right, Nani? Yes, sir. And he's already wanting to go play. Yes, sir. Praise God. Do yes, have sir. Any other prayer requests? <clears throat> or do you think, did we get them all, Mac? I think you got them all. 
amidst the coughing and choking fit. <laughs> That's just part of it, chap. Yeah, I was trying to turn myself into a submarine, I think. <laughs> Thought I could breathe underwater. <clears throat> you know, we we all got different things we got to deal with in life. I just right. apologize when it interrupts Bible prayer. <laughs> That's the uh, one. Hey, no, no apology needed. We all understand, chap. That's right, now. Yeah, thank you. You don't you don't have to apologize to us, man. We're family. Yeah. With the cancer that I had years ago and the damage they did to my esophagus. Yeah. It just and then the heat, it just triggers it to do things weird. <clears throat> and some days I I'm good, I don't cough at all, and other days I choke to death, it feels like. And everyone's like, Well, it's because you do this, because you I said it has nothing to do with that. And, and then I explain it to them and they go, well, I didn't realize that's because I don't go and poke broadcast this to everybody because there's no reason to but there's days that I can work great and I don't have a single problem I'm running at 90 miles an hour other days I'm going slower than the tortoise <laughs> and I had a customer today mention that he goes some days this guy was real slow but he gets things done anyways but other days he's like the energizer bunny you can't stop him <laughs> <laughs> you better not get rid of him he's your best guy out there and I'm like brother thank you but they know and it's they know I've got other teams that help me be who I am and it's hard to be humble when people keep doing that you know it is hard to not just say oh thank you and and then they go well how do you compliment somebody with your company that they know and Marco goes you better tell them and I'm like Marco you tell them and he goes no you got to tell them so I had to tell the guy how to put a review in and it's like, I don't need, <laughs> I don't know how to take compliments because I've been attacked all my life. And I'm so used to people being negative to me. When I get a compliment, I don't know how to act yeah. other than humble. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys battle that a lot. I do. Yeah. I just assume that they're not being truthful for, at first. Yeah. Same, same. They, they want something. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. That was the exact thing, yeah. That's exactly how. Thank you, guys. I couldn't explain it any better. Because of the servant's heart. See, the closer you get to God, the, bit, uh, the closer you get to God, the bigger the servant heart is. And everyone goes, so you mean you become submissive? No. You don't look for praise. You look for the for ways to serve. Yes. And that's what a servant's heart really is. You seek how to serve, not to honor yourself, but to honor God and to show God's glory through you. Yes. And that's only when God is closest to you. So when people, like you said, Isaac, like you said, Nani, like they have an ulterior motive. <laughs> and you assume that because the world still has ulterior motives and unfortunate it is we all feel that but I'm grateful you know for each and every person that understands that because I don't seek praise I seek to give praise to God in what I do right and so it's hard to accept a compliment because like I said the jaded side of me is still there because of everything I've suffered in this world but I just, I'm glad to know I'm not alone. I'm glad to know I'm not alone in that. Let us go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you as we come together tonight in our Bible study. Lord, I want to thank you and praise you and give you the glory for allowing me to breathe again so I can talk tonight. But Lord, first and foremost, for the blessings that you have put on us, not because we deserve them, but because you love us, oh God. Yes. And because you want to show how much you love us, sometimes you pour out things that are unexpected in times of need, that take a load of weight off a person. And that they come in on, a, and you're always on time, God. You're never late. You're never late, God. 
I want to thank you and first and foremost for that, Lord. And as we open our study tonight, as our brothers and sisters are hurting tonight, Lord, those battling cancers, strokes, migraines, heart attacks, seizures, blindness, spiritual deafness, spiritual muteness, Lord, the ones that are afraid to even speak about you in fear of what would happen to them. Lord, give them the strength of young David facing Goliath or young Samuel in a lion's den or young Daniel in a lion's den, God, or young Samuel when you were calling him as a little boy to be a leader of this people, Lord. The Lot having to leave his beloved town Walking out on faith. Know what building the ark, Lord. Trusting you, Lord. I want to thank you for that. Lord, your will be done in these lives right now. With all the issues that they're facing. Lord, send your comforter to our brothers and sisters that are hurting right now. Watching loved ones die. Experiencing loved ones passing. Uh, today, Lord, I just read where a young man lost his mother a month ago today and just found out today his brother committed suicide. Lord, give him strength. Give him peace. Give him courage and hope that he is surrounded by angels and loved ones that truly love him. Maybe not of his own family, but of people that truly love him and care for him and want nothing but the best for him. That he doesn't succumb to those demons himself. Lord, I also ask you to pray for our enemies as we pray for our enemies. Lord, you say to pray for those that despitefully use and curse you. Lord, I am reminded every day to even pray for my enemies, whether they're within or without. Lord, give us strength to know and trust you, no matter the situation or circumstance. You are the way maker. And as we open your word, Lord, guide our hearts and our eyes and our ears to only hear your words. Not vain interpretations, not self-interpretations, but by your very word we survive and are fed. Holy manna from heaven. We again thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Like I said, Saturday, we are doing a good study, guys. <laughs> I've got it right here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego this coming Saturday, guys. We're going to learn about the guys that didn't bend, they didn't bow, and they didn't burn. Instead, they danced in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> People forget they were dancing down there. <laughs> Ooh. But let's go ahead and read. And I love the opening of Hebrews 13. Because it starts with four words. Let brotherly love continue. What a verse. Four words. Chris, you reminded me of that about three weeks ago. In one of our conversations to let brotherly love continue. And it's right here in four words. And so I was like, wait a minute, Chris, you said that. <laughs> Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby, some have entertained angels unawares. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. How many people realize that that's actually happening, even in this day and age? A lot of people are entertaining angels. They don't even know. Just saying God is good. I'm here because God put me here. Changes somebody's lives, right? We've all talked about that. Just remember, some entertain angels unaware. Remember them that are bonds. What kind of bonds do you think he's talking about? Do you think he just means people that are in shackles? Or what about, or, or is it about life issues, prisoners of situation? Do you hmm. think, is that a good, a good way to ask that question? Hmm. 
it goes to empathy. This kind of aligns with empathy. And a lot of people don't know what the word empathy means. Empathy is the ability to feel others' pain, sorrow, worry, grief. It allows you to understand their situation and their emotion over your own. God gives his children the gift of empathy. How many of you had an easy life all your life? And I'm not, I'm not talking about rent bill uh, stress-free. I'm talking about a silver spoon where everything was given to you. I don't think there's anyone here today in our study that has had everything given to them. Hand over fist without any way of earning it. We've all had sorrow. We've all had struggles. We all had fears that we weren't going to have enough to pay our bills. Right? Yes. So not one of us haven't been in that boat. Somebody once asked me this question, and you guys can answer this, but myself, but I'm going to give you my answer first, but, first. but then I'm going to let you guys answer it. How do you know how it feels? Have you experienced loss? Have you ex experienced tragedy in your life? Have you experienced homelessness, starvation, fear that you're going to lose your vehicle that you have to repossession? Lost a loved one tragically. I could say 90% of us have. 90 to 98%. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But I have. I've watched loved ones die in my arms. I watched other people's loved ones die in my arms as a fireman when I was 18. I've experienced living in a cemetery in a sleeping bag and eating out of a trash can. For me, remembering them that in bonds is knowing the situation they're in. Now, a lot of it was because of my own choices that I was in those situations because I was rebelling against my first love. I didn't want to commit. I didn't want to surrender to God. I paid the, the price for being stiff-necked and reprobate. And then one day I met Jesus. Just like you guys one day met Jesus. Remembering someone in bonds is understanding their situation without judgment. And partaking that sorrow. And that's what empathy gives you. And I'm going to open it for you guys to share anything that you might understand about that. I honestly think the Lord puts us through adversity. For example, going through my husband's cancer battle and death. But through that, I'm able to help others. Yes. I understand more of what that feels like. Yeah. And not only did he grow my faith, but now he's allowing me to help others. Exactly. See, that's the gift of empathy. But people don't understand what empathy truly is. It's aligning people's hearts to see the pain in others first. And like you said, Nani, it's opened doors for you, hasn't it? It really has. It really has. Um, I've been part of widow groups because we get each other. Um, the first thing I teach a new widow is how to use the widow card. <laughs> I got to hear this one. Share, share that with us, guy, <laughs> Nani. I got to hear the widow well, card. I mean, my husband took care of all the upkeep of our home. And after he passed, that was on me. Yeah, and so, the, you know, it's like, I'm just this little old widow here. And I have no idea what I'm doing. I need your help. I need your honest help. And they do. They do 
honor that. So we wow. call that the widow card. Wow, I never heard it used that way. So yeah, I understand it now. But I never heard that term. And I'm like, go ahead and share that with us because I need to learn <laughs> that one. <laughs> My son-in-law's grandmother, when she lost her husband, she had this, they had the same oncologist as we did. She was celebrating her birthday at Cheesecake Factory, and she told the she she told the waiter, you know, this is my first birthday without my husband, and I would sure love a hot cup of coffee. Oh, and she got it on the house. Oh, so that's what the widow card is. That's a good one, Nani. I like that one. <laughs> God bless her. Hmm. <coughs> but yeah, that's exactly it. But thank you, Nani. I needed to hear that. So. Because it, that's the, what I'm talking about, guys. We're here to teach each other. We're not here as a teacher and student type thing. I encourage people to share their understanding of something more so than maybe what I can expand it. You guys might have a stronger sword than me on that and on a subject, you know. I'm grateful for that. Anyone else got something to share? Well, Nani, there's... 76 passages in the Bible about widows. So, yes sir. yes, sir. I would like to think of it as an opportunity for us to, as believers, men especially, be able to fulfill an obligation, a gap, yes. in a Christian way. Not in a lecherous way, not in a take advantage way, no. but in a, in a true. One of those, this is what's happening. Who do I call? Yeah. Type of way. So, you know, I'm sorry again for your loss. I, I do understand it's important to God how. You know, we as society follow up with them. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, lest I digress, I <clears throat> just thought that was an interesting fact. Yeah. 76 passages, Chris. Wow. I knew there was over 50, but I didn't know it was 76. Wow. The widows and the orphans. Yeah, amen. See, I learned something new today. 76 passages. Wow. But I can tell you the shortest verse in the Bible is only two words. Mm -hmm. John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. But I didn't know there were 76 mentions of widows and orphans. Wow. Learned something. <clears throat> and I've been reading God's word all my life. Off and on. Wow. And I know that, and that in turn as a widow really helps me to realize how much the Lord loves me. Mm. Oh, beautiful point to make. Yes. He loves the widows and the orphans, and he did not want us just to be forgotten. Yes. But wouldn't that be remember those in bonds of emotion? Yes. Exactly. So you see how that applies, right? Yes. I love it. See, that's why I love these studies. That's why I love these studies. We all learn something. And you guys know that the Bible has 365 mentions, do not fear, or fear not. One for every day of the year. Mentions, fear not, or have no fear. Do not be afraid. It's one of the terms that's used. It is I. So it's like, and then, like I said, I'm not trying to one up Chris or Nani on that, how it connects together. <laughs> but do not fear. I am there with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. See, even in bonds, Paul was not forgotten, was he? No. Even in bonds of sorrow and grief. Nani wasn't forgotten. No. Nope. I was given strength and grace through that time. Yep. Even in bonds, I wasn't forgotten, even though I was still in sin when my mother died. 
Even when Troy died, I had people surround me with love and genuine care. I just didn't know how to accept it. And I've learned that over the years that you have to accept the love. Even though it's hard to accept it, you have to let go and let God lead this. Because years ago, I'd get upset when somebody offered me money. How dare you? I could take care of my own. And that's and that's something else I forgot to mention about giving. It's hard for us to accept blessings because of that. Because we get jaded, as somebody said a little bit ago. <clears throat> but I like what's coming next. Yes. Can we hit one more thing on? Yes. Wasn't Paul a prisoner? Yeah. Yes. He was a prisoner, both physical and spiritual. So physically, I would think of that as bonds. Yep. And, and I, you know, the first house I ever built, I guess it was a triplex. Um, a lot more than I should have taken on at my skill level, but that's that's a whole different story. But <laughs> see, that's spiritual. That's spiritual bondage. <laughs> well, the man I built that triplex for did a prison ministry. So next thing I knew, I was floating out to McNeil Island and you take a ferry out, out there and playing guitar George out <laughs> out at the prison and it I uh, it's actually one of my fondest memories. Praise God. Um, that and coaching Special Olympics. Um another beautiful experience. Yeah. And I would I would think if you've been around our special people um, been there. There's a bondage. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I just just wanted to follow up on the bondage. Yeah. Which I'll get exactly off the soapbox it. and let you proceed. Well, no, no, that's exactly it, Chris. Um, I just you guys know that I was born without a hip, and I had to deal with special needs. Um, and that's probably why I don't like the word retarded or handicapped, because that means limited. Amen. Uh, I can't stand that word handicap. Uh, I just can't. It's something Amen. that I just that always gets my go. Uh, Amen. Certain Amen. words, they trigger me every time. And that's one that does. Because we're differently abled. Uh, we're, we may be prisoners in one way, but God grants us gifts in another. But Paul was both physically and spiritually bound. But Paul made a comment that breaks the bondage. Even though he was in bondage, he said, I willingly am bound for Christ. Not verbatim, but I'm paraphrasing what he said. I'm willingly, cheerfully, gladly a prisoner for Christ. And a lot of people don't realize that. Paul suffered more adversity than most early Christians did. Without, without even people realizing that he was flogged. That man was beat more than once for his preaching God's word. He was pounded on by the Jews for preaching Christ crucified. He didn't just, he just didn't get taken up and grabbed and they just put a hand on him and said, let's go. They physically beat Paul more than once. And Paul said, I count it all joy for the sake of the cross. So do you think Paul aligned with that about them that are in bonds? Yes. Both physically and spiritually. We align with that. And that's why it says, and them which suffer adversity. I'll tell you right now, there's more differently able people out there than people realize that are amongst us. And they're functioning and they're doing jobs that if society had their way, they would have been shut in a building, in an institution and ignored. That's what the world does. 
it pushes things to the side that need to be brought out in the open. Kind of like they did in World War War II. Go ahead, Mac. I said like they did in World War II, and I'll leave it at that. The eugenics, yep. It's exactly it. Shove it to the side. I don't want to see it. I don't even want to think about it. I don't want to help them. I'm too busy making my own things. Which is contrary to the word. But look at verse 4 as we move forward. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. Give me a second. I have to pause for a second on that. Ooh. Hoist it at me. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You know, there's a biblical wedding and Jesus called himself the bridegroom and he's waiting for his bride, preparing for his bride, right? And then there's physical marriage. And that's to your help me. People don't realize that your spiritual marriage and your physical marriage have a connection. And when Jesus uses the term undefiled, it means purity. Husband of one wife, sober, grave, temperate. Rules his own house. Well, I mean, I could give you the list pretty much. Paraphrasing it. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Lying to God, attempting to lie to God. Does anyone remember there in Acts when Ananias and Sevira sold land and then they tried to lie to God? The husband and wife. And the Holy Spirit revealed it to Peter, and Peter challenged them on it, and they admitted it. And Ananias died, and Severa came in, and he asked Severa. And the same people that buried Ananias wound up burying Sephira. How about that for instant judgment from God? I've been, it's been, let's see, 2001, and this is 24, so that's 23 years marriage as of June 6th. That I've been married to one woman and true to one woman. God is good. It's one thing we have to do is to keep honoring our married, our marriages, our spiritual marriage and our physical marriage. Because in doing so, you're honoring God. And the opposite is punishment that's unmeasurable. Do we have any questions on that? Or does that make sense? Oh, all right, Terry. God bless you. I didn't see that. Ooh. Terry had to leave, but we'll pray for we'll we'll watch for her to come back. Hmm. We'll go ahead and move forward here. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Hey, Chris, weren't we talking about this before prayer? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Talk about confirmation in the word, guys. Mm. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear. Oh, 365 times God says not fear. What man shall do unto me? Hmm. Two confirmations, Nani. Yes, sir. Ooh. I mean, we don't have any question about that, do we? Uh, we know that uh, covetous means ulterior motive or self-glorification. What else does covetous mean, guys? Mm -hmm. Envy. 
without fondness. Hmm. Talk about God being good. But his promise is to never, ever leave us. Nor forsake us. Even when we feel abandoned, he's there. He's not only there, but he's holding us. And showing us how much he loves us. And that comes in the form of a spiritual hug or a random stranger saying, keep up what you're doing. God's watching. It's always a reminder of God's presence, even in our darkest moments. Because why? What's what's the end result? So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Who? hallelujah. Ah. But if you want to expand it, go ahead. I mean, that one self-explains itself. I, I, I think Paul was pretty direct there. Matter of fact, wasn't he, Sarah, the sister? Mm -hmm. What a great reminder, though, right in the middle of the conversation we had earlier than now this. <laughs> if that's not God, then I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no way that can't be God saying, see, I told you. <laughs> God reminds us even in the word. <clears throat> let's go to let's go to the next one. Remember them which have the rule over you, who you have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ the same yesterday. And today and forever. How many times did I say God is not ever changing? That's right. He will not change. God's unwavering. There's no doubt. He's the same today, tomorrow, and yet and forever. There's no doubt. And a lot of people will miss that statement here. And I'm going to highlight that one. Verse 8. I'm going to ask Mac. You already have that highlighted, Mac? Verse 8? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and, and today and forever. Yep. I was going to ask if you had that already highlighted. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I figured you did. That's why I was going to ask because I know you'd like the key ones. Because <laughs> those are the ones you ingrain in your heart. You may not say uh, it verbatim. That, that one's been... Uh, highlighted in just about every Bible I've had since I was in private school is uh, from about first grade on. That's one of the first things they taught us. Praise God. That's why I had to ask if you already had it highlighted. Yes, sir. I, I, <laughs> have, I have a sermon note for this verse. Go ahead, sister. So the way that Jesus led his 12 disciples is the same way that he will lead us. Amen. The love he expressed on the cross is the same love he extends to us. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power available to us today. Count on the certainty that Christ is perfect. He will not change. Exactly. Exactly what I've been saying. Ooh, yes. We've been talking about that for how long now, Lonnie? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and then you get a sermon note that actually confirms what I said. Yes. And it's because the spirit in us, not that I said it personally, but the spirit pushed me to say it. I got to say it's Holy Spirit driven. Exactly. Because it's not of my own vain mind. It's because the Holy Spirit is pushing me to remind us. Ooh, I can't one-up that one. No. <laughs> There's no need to one-up that. That's perfect. What an analogy. Be not... Remember, I, I, I know this is deja vu for every one of you guys. And it's deja vu for me. We talk about it with First Timothy 4 all the time with my... um About on my um Twitter profile. About being carried away by vain doctrines. Yes. But let's hear it from the word of God. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. 
For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with means, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Don't waste your time with false teaching. A little error. And you've all heard me say this one because Jesus said it best. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little lie destroys the whole witness. A little deceit destroys the whole body, spiritually and physically. I cannot stress that enough. And here you have confirmation that it's not my words, it's God's words. Nani, I think you and I talked about this once at length. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were talking on uh, there in Discord that day about how many of these false teachers are out there just pouring into people all yes. these twisted scriptures. And I asked you, what would, should I just shake the dust? And you were like, you and Terry both go, stop arguing with him. And I'm like, yeah. you're right. <laughs> you and Terry were the ones yelling at me to quit arguing with the idiot. So <laughs> God won, the idiot lost. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I remember because you kept Fortunately, me. on the judgment day, he's really going to lose. Amen. But I remember that day because he kept texting me and you guys said, just stop letting him harass you by text. Block him. Because mm -hmm. I'm so used to blocking him on Twitter, but never think to block somebody on my cell phone. Oh, yeah. And you're like, well, just get rid of him and he's going to keep you up all night. Well, it worked. <laughs> I listened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, because that's what the enemy likes to do is waste your time with vain arguments and needless argument and debate. If somebody says, I want to sit and have a debate with you, that's not of God. You don't debate the word of God. What God's word says is what it means. There's no ulterior motive in God's word unless you yank it out of context. We've all done it on accident. We've all done it intentionally before we were saved. But once we got Jesus in our heart and truly submitted to his will, we seen the enemy for what it was, didn't we? Yeah. We've all had our enemies facing us, our antichrist attacking us. And, and they pose a really great opposing debate. But is it worth it? Was it worth your stress, your time, when you could be reaching down and grabbing a lost child and bringing them out of the fire? See, that's what we should be focusing on, the ones that will, not the ones that want to waste our time. Yes. It's kind of heartless to say this, but I'm going to say it. You guys can yell at me later <laughs> during this study. Oh, let me get a drink first. <laughs> oh, God might be stopping me from saying it. <laughs> There's an old adage that says, some will, some what, so what, move on. I say some will, some what, some will, some won't. Pray and move on. Pray for them anyways. And move forward. Even those that mock you, pray for them. And it aligns exactly with Christ's teaching. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those that mock you and curse you and spit on you. And outwardly seek to destroy you. Pray for them anyways. We had the great example when Stephen was stoned to death, didn't we? What did Stephen say while he was being stoned to death, guys? Does anyone remember that? Said, so laying off this charge on him. Yeah. That's a good way to paraphrase it, Jimmy. Yeah. Lay not this charge. Lay not their sin against them. And it goes back to the cross. When Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We can't say, so what? We have to forgive. We have to forgive and pray for them anyways. 
It doesn't mean stand there and take their abuse. Move forward. That's why I said some people might say it's a little brutal to think that way. But it's the way we have to think. Rescue those that are willing to be rescued. And pray for those that are refusing it at that moment. Because maybe you're not the vessel that God's going to use to deliver them. You might be just the seed sower. Or the field preparation. The guy that prepares the field for seed. Then the farmer comes in and sets the seed down. Then as it comes time to harvest. The wheat is fully ripened and ready to accept the gift of Christ. God receives the reward. It's another one snatched from hell. Right? We're just laborers in his vineyard. And I love this next part, Nani. We have an altar. Whereof they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. <clears throat> Wherefore, Jesus also. Do you see this comparative to Christ? <clears throat> A lot of people miss this comparative to Christ or typology. The fizzies helping my throat from the Pepsi. Okay. <clears throat> so let me get back here to where I was. Verse 12. Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. What a comparison. <clears throat> let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. For here we have, for here have we, excuse me, for here have we no continuing city. <laughs> but we seek one to come. Pause for a second here. Let's let's look at that again, guys. Okay, just like the meats, once the animal was sacrificed on the altar, they still carried the meat out and put it outside the city to burn it, right? To cook it. It's like Jesus. The comparison... And a lot of people say, well, this is supporting cannibalism. No. It's not about cannibalism. It's about the tradition. Jesus was set apart and cast aside as our sin, right? Yes. Sin couldn't enter the holiest places, right? So Jesus' mortal body had to go to hell first because he took on the sin of us. When he rose from the grave, what happened? Didn't he take the keys of death and hell with him? Yes. I knew. So when you see this typology based on ritual, it's not saying that they literally took Jesus out and cooked him. No. But a lot of people will twist this to say that. And it doesn't say that. It compares how Jesus was prepared for the sacrifice for sin. How he was put outside the city in the tomb for three days. While his spirit went to death and down to hell. For man's sin, not his own. And what did he do when he returned to his body? He took the keys to death and hell with him to the Father, which gave him authority over death and hell. 
forever. But wait, Jesus already had the keys to death and hell. They were on loan to Satan. But now they're back in his possession because he fulfilled the prophecy. Somehow the Pepsi's helping my throat, guys. Awesome. The fizziness. <laughs> I don't know why it's tickling my larynx, but it's working. Ugh. <clears throat> but see, a lot of people miss that. We have to remember that Jesus was the final sacrifice that was required by God. But there's also another comparative. <clears throat> a young boy named Isaac. Yep. And what did God give? The perfect spotted lamb gave Jesus, took its place, took Isaac's place on the altar, didn't he? He did. <laughs> it's amazing how God works with typologies. Suffered without the gate. But I know this next part. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing whose reproach? Yes. His reproach, right? Jesus' reproach. Even though it's our reproach, he took it on and took it from us, and it became his reproach. It's funny how that works, isn't it? Mm -hmm. For here we here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Everybody remembers the um, hymn song of "This world is not my home; I'm just a passing through." How many of you know that old song? It's so accurate. We're not seeking an earthly home, are we? We're seeking our eternal home in the new heaven and the new earth that God is going to build. Right? Yes, sir. So this world is not our home. We're just passing through. <clears throat> Let's be the example for those that are passing through as well. Now, I like this next verse. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Ooh, hallelujah. I was telling Terry earlier, just before Bible study, how good God is. We have to be continually thanking God even for the littlest of things that don't seem meaningful to others. But they are meaningful because it was a gift of God. I think I talk about that a lot in our morning prayers. <laughs> I do. Some people go, oh, here he's on that old gift. Praise to God this morning. He woke you up. <laughs> Praise God he did, though. Praise God he did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, honestly, right now, praising God for electricity yeah. is it, not something I need. But boy, do I love it. And it helps joining Bible study if you have internet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and just because he is God, he did it 30 minutes before Bible study. Isn't that awesome? God is good. <laughs> All the time he's good. Oh, Just because it's the only word we can call it to describe how much he loves us. <clears throat> good is a general all-covering love, in my opinion. But I like the next one that's coming, Nani. <laughs> but do but to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with 
with or with such sacrifices God is well pleased. This is when we help others without expectancy. Almsgiving. The less fortunate. Even if it's prayer. Nani, we talked about that just a few little bit ago. Sometimes all they need is prayer and God will open the door. Because that's all we have to give. That could be our, that prayer is a widow's might sometimes. All that we have. That's what the widow's might story is about. All of her being, her whole body gave that gift. You know what I mean? It's not about the money. It's about the spirit and the heart of the person giving. And a lot of people don't understand that. Oh, God is so good. I'm going to get off my soapbox on that comment, uh, Chris. Because <laughs> we know I can go into a tirade about these plates being shoved in people's face. But that's not necessary at this time because this is a reminder passage. <laughs> Obey them that have the rule over you. Hey, Chris, here's your government statement. And submit yourselves for they so fun. for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. This is your spiritual governor, your guides, your elders, your widows, your pastors, your deacons, your ushers, and even including your government because God put them in that place or that position to either A, open your eyes to the wickedness, or B, what you need to do in your own life. Because it's not about honoring the person, it's about honoring God through obeying. Mm -hmm. And that's why Chris says, pray for your politicians. You may not like them there, but God has them there for a reason. Exactly. I get it, Chris. <laughs> it's a tough one. It's the hardest one, I think, out of a lot of them. It really is. It's one of the hardest ones. Or maybe simple in the fact that God's going to only be the perfect leader. That's I mean, that's, that's honestly who we need as our king. Mm -hmm. Amen. Exactly. Ooh. Chris, you're giving me chills over here, brother. And Goose. So we may as well pray for whatever God's will is and exactly. know that he has his hands upon things. And many times I've been humbled because I thought I knew, but I didn't. Yeah. Looking back and in hindsight, it, it was clear that, that God absolutely knew and mm -hmm. saved me from my own foolishness. Yeah. Yes. And to piggyback on top of that, we need to pray for God's guidance as we vote. Not yeah. what we, we want. Absolutely. God. Back to back grand well, Yeah. Hallelujah. Praying, it's not by a political party. No. And, and that's where a lot of people get it. This is where politics can be stupid and dangerous. Is being loyal to a party over God instead of allowing God to lead your voting. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell people, don't be strictly this or that. Be a Christian and pray to God and let him guide your decisions. Excuse me. Now the fizzy drinks are catching up to me. Now I got the burpees. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Sitting over here trying to put my mouth in my sleeve so I don't make a belch. <laughs> but yeah. But then we come to the next part as we move forward here. Pray for us. Paul again, 
another short statement. Pray for us. For we trust we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. But I beseech you the rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. In all things, willing to live honestly. What an instruction from Paul right there, guys. Do you catch that? It's what we talk about every day, isn't it, guys? About living honestly, living the way God wants us to live. Not how the world wants us to do it, but the way God wants us to do it. But then Paul says, I implore, I beg you, I command you. See, he uses the word beseech as a matter of fact statement here. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's working on an oven in the background. <laughs> <laughs> might have busted somebody cooking cookies <laughs> huh. I was picking on you Mac I just heard noises in the background oh, no. <laughs> but look here remember I said implore entreat to urgently ask for mercy or help to exhort to urgently counsel encourage or admonish it also means to comfort and also to call near, to give help. <clears throat> That's pretty good definitions, isn't it, guys? How many of you guys knew that beseech had that many meanings? <clears throat> Four definitions of the word beseech. That's why I hovered over it, give people a chance to look at it. Okay, I think I'm putting that Mac to sleep now. <laughs> it's been a long day, Chip. Oh, it's been a long day for me too, brother. Uh, we're almost done, I promise you. <laughs> I won't hold you all hostage too long tonight. <laughs> now, I love the conclusion that Paul uses to close Hebrews out. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Not my will, but your will. Jesus said words, right? Not his will, but the Father's will. Mm. Working in you, which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Ooh. And I beseech you, brethren, here's that word beseech again, suffer the word of exhortation, for I have written a letter unto you in a few in few words. Know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, with whom, if he come shortly, I will see you. Salute all them that have the rule over you, and all the saints, they of Italy, salute you. Grace be with you. Amen. What a concluding prayer, guys. But you notice he uses that word beseech a lot. When he wants them to pay attention to what he's saying. Take heed. Take listen. Take note. Pay attention. I'm, I'm calling you. I'm giving you a command here. Right? But I love how Paul says it in that first verse. That first, uh, all verse 20 there. And it's actually 20 and 21. 
It's one of his closing prayers. Try to get it in yellow, and then I'll get the next one in green for you. Yeah, that's two different prayers there, guys. Paul closed this letter and this book of Hebrews. Not with one prayer, but two separate prayers. That's the first prayer I've got highlighted in yellow and green. The second prayer is the, and I beseech you, I implore you, brethren, suffer the word of exhortation. He doesn't mean suffer it like it's painful to learn it. This is endure, apply, adhere it, learn, willingly go through the letters, the exhortation or the instruction. How many of us, when we were little, didn't want to go through classes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was torture, right? Mm -hmm. We yeah. all had that one teacher that sounded like Charlie Brown's teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's exactly what he's talking about. <clears throat> it's not a negative suffering, but a willing suffering. Pushing through, focusing, and learning the word of God. <laughs> For I have written a letter unto you in few words. All few words, 13 chapters. <laughs> oh, I love Paul. His sense of humor. Thirteen chapters he wrote to them in Italy. And he calls it few words. How about that for an oxymoronic statement, <laughs> Nani? <laughs> well, you could have made it 44 chapters, <laughs> oh, sure. I know, but Paul's sarcasm in that comment. Oh, I'm sitting there laughing because he said, I wrote, I have written a letter unto you in few words. Uh, <laughs> I love Paul. Oh. Uh. Those that know, that know. That's why we're laughing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen this kind of sarcasm a lot from Paul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty. He's free to come to them. With whom, if he comes shortly, I will see you. Salute all them that have the rule over you. And all the saints, they of Italy, salute you. Grace be with you all. Amen. Isn't that one of Paul's standards closings? Mm -hmm. I salute you. When he's writing a letter of love and not a letter of rebuke. Yeah. That's what I love about the consistency of Paul. He applies his writing style to the culture of the area he is writing to. He's got the gift of writing. <laughs> and he does it so well and applies it to the culture and the area it is intended to go to. Now, thinking about that, we've read it from different areas all over the world. Laodicea, Corinthia, Galatia, Ephesia, right? Mm -hmm. And we learn it from all of them. Now, they have different cultures, different styles, but every single one of these books that Paul has written or these letters, these epistles have been applicable, applicable and relatable to us in this day, haven't they? Yes. But it wouldn't have been that way for those cultures of that time. Each one had to be written a different way, depending on the culture, because some people wouldn't accept it. If it was a complete book like that. It's funny how that works. But it's also amazing how God works through Paul's writings. If we were probably in that area, we'd be like, who's this clown talking to you like that? <laughs> right? 
but we understood Paul fully. And I'm going to ask if any of you have something else to share or any questions before we close in prayer. Mike's open to any of you. I am just grateful for Paul's writings that we can apply them to our to our life, right? Mm -hmm. It's freedom. It really is truly spiritual freedom to know that Paul's already reminding us that God's already been here before we were. God already knows the situation we're in. And we can relate to each and every region that Paul wrote a letter to. And it can be applied equally to this day and age. Let us not grow weary in obeying God's word. And not seeking the honor of men, but seeking God's glory and honor in all things. Let's not get heady and high-minded and forget we serve a mighty God. And that sums up pretty much what that's saying there in that ending. It really does. Let us go ahead and close in prayer, guys. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you. We give you the glory for this lesson tonight, Lord. I want to thank you for all the confirmations you've given us through this Hebrew study tonight, oh God. How serving you is the key. Living for you and honoring you in everything. Bless you. Lord, I just want to thank you and praise you right now for all that you have done. All the doors you've opened that needed to be opened, Lord, and the doors you shut to save us from our own stupidity. Lord, I am ever grateful for that. Lord, even enduring hardship so that we can understand someone else's hardship or their pain and their sorrow. Lord, You've been preparing us for where we are now for years. And I want to thank you for that. I want to give you the praise and glory for that right now, Lord. And I want to thank you again for this fellowship. And for all my brothers and sisters that are present and those that watch later. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Let me go ahead and stop this recording, guys. Uh, those that have to leave right now, um, go ahead. I God bless you guys. I love you all. When we come back to convene on Saturday, we will be doing the Shadrach Sendigo study. And we're going to start that so we can have a reminder of what it means to not bend, not bow, or not burn. Um, you all have a good evening. And I pray that as you see my prayers or we see each other online throughout the rest of the week, that I'm always thinking about you and I'm always praying about you guys. God bless you all. Love you. Love you, brother. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night, JC. Love and cry. Thank you. Hey, JC. Love you guys. Okay. God bless you guys. Have a good night. Bless you.